How about uterine transplants for trans women? I was afraid you were headed there. Um, first, definitions. I increasingly uh, do not like the term trans woman and trans man. Uh, because um, while it seemed a kindness and a kind of respect, um, it of course has been weaponized. And now you have all sorts of people saying, trans, it's just type of woman, just type of woman. Well, no, no, it's not. So I just uh, Googled or duck, duck, goad, um, trans woman definition just to see. And sure. yeah. And so what I have um, just from the American Heritage Dictionary is trans woman noun one a transgender person who lives as a woman mm -hmm. i would say a transgender man who lives as a woman but okay or second definition a male to female transgender or transsexual person okay good wikipedia however <laughs> i wikipedia, remember wikipedia yes wikipedia a trans woman is a woman who was assigned male at birth trans women have a female gender identity and may experience gender dysphoria Gender dysphoria may be treated with gender affirming care. Gender affirming care may include social or medical transition. Do you remember when Wikipedia was good? Oh man, yeah, that was I great. Do. So that's insane. Wikipedia is wrong. That's not what a trans woman is, uh, but that's what we are being led to believe. And that's what something like half the country is at least pretending to believe uh, when they say trans woman. Okay, so that is what I mean. Now, when I am saying, what about uterine transplants for trans women? That's men who are living as women. Should they be allowed to get uterine transplants? Yes, you have a comment? Well, no <laughs> is the answer. Um, and no is the answer because children have to be primary in all of this. And there is no way that the brave new world represented by... Um, I mean, effectively, you are transplanting a uterus. You are using a trans woman, that is, a man living as a woman. You are using that person's blood to keep alive a uterus from somebody else that... Um, the, the thing is so, uh, there's nothing natural about this. Okay, well, the American Medical Association's Journal of Ethics feels differently. The American Medical Association, yeah. okay. Here we go. Yeah. June 2023, hey, the same, yeah, the same month uh, that the New England Journal of Medicine published that important research, albeit untethered to any theoretical considerations that we talked about in the first half of today's episode. Here it is, the AMA, American Medical Association's Journal of Ethics in June 2023, published what it identifies right up front as a peer-reviewed article called Should Uterus Transplantation for Trans Women and Trans Men Be Subsidized? Here we go. From the introduction. Costs of uterus transplantation. Gestation of a child following uterus transplantation in cisgender women with absolute uterine infertility factor has proved successful in the United States. The reference that they give there, incidentally, is the paper that I was just reading from. So um, that is a weak version of successful, but let's take that at face value for the moment. Given the success of uterine transplantation that relies on both living and deceased donors, not at the same time, they're talking about different situations, but okay. Um, interest in the procedure is likely to extend beyond cisgender women. Among those likely to be interested in uterine transplants are trans women who want to gestate their own children, Trans women who want uterus transplants to consolidate their identities but not to gestate children. Some trans men who want to gestate their own children. And cis men wanting to gestate children of their own. I will continue. <laughs> so that you can have time to respond. And this was published... Two months ago. June, not April. All right, yeah. With regard to trans women who want to gestate children. Even though there has been no uterus transplant to date in trans women that we know of, some clinicians have maintained that there are no absolute barriers in anatomy, hormones, and obstetric considerations that would rule out the possibility of successful uterine transplant in trans women. 
trans women wanting to gestate children can plausibly justify subsidy of uterine transplants on a number of grounds, as mentioned above. Trans women lack a trait, the ability to bear children, that may cause them to experience psychological dissonance in a way that undermines their health and well-being. The lack of a uterus also closes off the prospect of gestating a child in a way that is available to women as a class. It follows that lack of uterus is an obstacle to full participation in the social goods attached to women's identity. So too is the fact that you're not a woman. That's going to get in the way of participating in womanhood. It just is. I'm going to read that one sentence that struck me a lot, and then I'm go on a little bit, and then... Trans women lack a trait, the ability to bear children, that may cause them to experience psychological dissonance in a way that undermines their health and well-being. And the next sentence is particularly nasty. The lack of a uterus also closes off the prospect of gestating a child in a way that is available to women as a class. So, one thing that emerges from this, one of many things that emerges from this, is uh, that people need to stop looking to medical invent intervention to solve their socio-psychological problems. You should get a grip. <laughs> like, seriously, get a grip. Like, go outside, do something real, learn a skill, like, eat real food, move your body, anything. Get a grip, not a uterus. <laughs> this is insane. <laughs> okay, trans women who want to consolidate identity. So this is an article in the American Medical Association's Journal of Ethics on why insurance companies should consider paying for uterine transplants in all sorts of people who aren't actually women, uh, including cis men who are women, but the re well, we'll get there, but oh my God. Okay. Trans women who want to consolidate identity. Some, but not all of this rationale also applies to trans women who want uterine transplants not to have a child, but to consolidate their identity. They may experience dissonance at not having a uterus, but in this case, uterine transplant is not sought to remedy lack of access to the goods, the goods of gestation and childbearing. I will remind the viewers and the listeners that this is inherently a temporary process. It is removed after parity is achieved, after birth happens, because it's not a long-term sustainable solution to anything because of the immunosuppressive drugs that you have to be on as a result of having someone else's uterus in your body. Um, I would point out that there are two other issues here oh there's so many other issues but then, uh, okay okay no you yeah, before we get to the trans men yes go on well i just want to i just want to point out these uteri sure come from somewhere they are either going to come from actual women and of course this is a document about the ethics of this process and Some so of them are coming from trans men who have decided they don't need their uteri anymore <laughs> in fact they have to get rid of it in order to fully realize their whatever they said yeah um yeah okay well let's put it this way but it's also there's also um cadaver donors well cadaver donors but it sounded like from the first paper that you read that that was not as likely to function um the cases um there there have been successful cases um yeah but uh, from uh, not cadaver from the two successful cases that i can think of that i know in my head were actually living mother to daughter yeah and i think another one was another family member for okay you know, but but reasons. in the case of a so-called trans woman yeah are we going to get into a situation where women are going to be paid to surrender their uteruses and therefore, if uteruses are important to being a woman, some woman is giving up some amount of womanness in order for some guy to pretend to be a woman. Yeah, you thought surrogacy was bad. Right. This is yeah. this is yeah. next level insane. Yep. Then we're going to get yep. into, okay, suppose that these are going to be cadaver um, uteruses. Can you become a donor that forbids the installing of your uterus into a trans woman? It's transphobic, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so the point is then there's going to be some legal question about whether or not you are allowed to be specific about to whom your organs go, and presumably you can't. And so this is going to cause organ donation to dry up. Yep. I mean, sure. the whole thing is so bonkers. And over, it's not like 
you know, it masquerades as a magic wand that's going to allow you to experience this sacred piece of being a woman. And the point is, no, this is so heavily medicalized that there's nothing natural about it. To yep. the extent that it even works for real women, where it basically right. works it. Yep. Exactly. Okay, one more bit from this paper. With regard to who, besides women, might be, um, might be eligible for uterine transplants. Trans men who want to gestate children after gender-affirming surgery. So before I read the rest of this, let me just unpack that. Yeah, please do, because I'm, I'm working. I can't get it. This is women who've decided that they're actually men and who have had so-called bottom surgery that uh, removes their functional female reproductive parts and maybe installs some totally non-functional male parts out of the skin on their arm, whatever. Um, having thought about it more, decided that, yeah, they still apparently, by this, uh, by this language, do believe themselves to be men, that is trans men, but they also want to gestate a child, because that's what men do. Trans men who want to gestate children after gender-affirming surgery. This is not detransitioners. Right. This is trans men who want to gestate children after gender-affirming surgery. Trans men start life with female typical bodies, but modify their bodies to align with male typical traits to varying degrees. Some trans men have children prior to any body modifications that interfere with gestation. Others do not, and have their uterus removed to conform their bodies to a certain gender ideal. Some trans men have transi transitioned in gender, but retained their uterus and gestated children. This precedent triggered interest in uterine transplants among trans men, especially if they did not retain their uterus or store gametes prior to their transition. What is the word especially doing there? What is any of this doing here? Yeah. Um, th this is so beyond, uh, like simultaneously narcissistic at the individual level and apocalyptic at the societal level. It is, it is, apocalyptic narcissism. May I have my screen back for a second? Um, it's even worse than that. Whoa. Yeah. Um, do, you, do you have comments before I go well, to even worse than that? I, yeah. There's something about this that I increasingly regard transhumanism as a kind of techno-utopian mental yeah. disorder. Yep, 100%. And the point is, you, one of the principles of maturation, one of the things that you are supposed to pick up as you become a human being, I mean, let's face it, you are getting used to all sorts of craziness as, to be a human being. Yes, you are a fish who has taken to land and you, your ancestors spent a lot of time as a, a primate swinging through the trees. Right, so you have this weird set of baggage and then, mm -hmm. okay, you're a person and you're a person and you can use language to convey things or to manipulate or you have all of the things that language does. Part of becoming a person is reconciling yourself to what you are and playing the hand you've been dealt. And if you don't like that hand, you can work to better yourself, to upgrade it, but the idea of dragging medicine into tailoring you or tailoring you enough that at a cocktail party you can claim to be something and there is some medical justification for using the terms you're using it's nonsense yep. you how, how much happier are people who do this actually going to be how much more does, i mean of course plastic surgery is the same thing right yep and, you know Bigger boobs, tighter jawline, skin light. I mean, Michael Jackson was, yep. you know, was doing this constantly as well in, you know, in a different domain. And okay, you look like your version of a more perfect ideal. And now what? Like now you know that you couldn't get there on your own. Like to, to what end? Right. To what end? And and the fact is, if you look, we have a world that's badly structured. Developmentally, it's a mess. And it causes lots and lots of people to be deeply dissatisfied, which is not their fault. That yes. is the fault of us having structured the world that they were born into badly. And we should fix it. Yeah. But if you are such a person, you are born into this crazy world and development 
leaves you totally unsatisfied with what you are, so you want a total redo. What are the chances that the redo that you get the medical establishment to provide you for money is actually going to satisfy you? What is, what is the chances that the problem isn't that you are constitutionally unsatisfied and unsatisfiable and that you're going to be as unsatisfied with the thing you land as as the thing you started off as the chances are extremely high so why is modern medicine uh pretending that that's not even a question oh you think you'll be happier when you have x how many myths do we have in which people do we not have a proverb be careful what you wish for mm. Right? People used to know that you needed to be careful what you wished for because you might not be as happy with it if you got it as you think you will be. That's a, grass is always greener. The grass is always greener, that whole thing. Yeah. And so somebody at the very least needs to study this madness and discover whether or not it results in satisfied people or people who get to these places compromised in, uh, in, in themselves and still feel about as they did, which... That's the cruel trick that's being played on kids. Yeah. Kids are being told, hey, that thing that you desperately want, you, you can, can have it. it. And then, of course, the kid is going to learn after they've lost their reproductive capacity, their ability to have a proper sex life. They're going to discover, oh, that was a lie told to you by adults who should have known better, but there was money at stake. Yeah, they didn't know better, usually. Usually.